I guess I'll just get started. Uh, today, for our second ever Cha Cha Chats on Coin Market Cup Chat, uh, we will be discussing on chain events. And we have two very smart analysts in the space to be talking with us today. Uh, I'm co hosting, I'm Molly Jane, um, a content manager at CMC, and I'm co hosting with Lucas Adamoro of Into the Block, as well as Maxime Belashevich from Santiment. So, if you guys could both introduce yourselves to our audience. Do you want to go first, Maxime? Yeah. Uh, hi, everyone. Uh, Maxime, founder of Santiment, focused on behavior analytics for crypto assets. Uh, grown over the years, but here to talk uh, uh, mostly about some interesting uh, buttons or shown in one or two charts uh, what we can see in uh, our. Yep. Um, hi, everyone. Uh, thanks for having me, Molly. Uh, my name is Lucas Otomuro. I'm a senior analyst at Into the Block. Um, I lead our research efforts into new and growing areas uh, such as DeFi. And well, what a better time uh, to talk about Aave uh, with the Aavenomics release uh, just announced yesterday. Um, yeah, I see Molly, you can take it over. Sorry, um, I, my computer froze for a second. I just wanted to say that one of the special quirks of Cha Cha Chats is that the name actually derives from cha or chai, which is tea in some languages, which we at CMC consider the universal beverage of contemplation. So as everyone's watching, as we're chatting, we're all drinking our different kinds of tea. I have iced tea because it's a cold day. I don't know what you guys are drinking. You can share your tea preferences as well as your job descriptions. I, yeah, I've, got, cool, yeah. I've got chai tea for the cha cha chai. It's great. Yeah, cool. Actually, this is one of my favorite. And uh, uh, in my previous time, I, I lived a very long time in yoga, like seven years, and I learned how to cook it myself. But it will oh, come nice. a little bit, uh, uh, yeah, a little bit late in one hour. <laughs> <laughs> so not yet, not yet. It's like, uh, yeah. But yeah, chai, chai, I like it too. And then the, the next uh, choice is uh, different kind of green teas. Yeah. Nice. All right. Mm -hmm. Well, let's get started with the charts now that we're done with the chai. Yeah. So I guess it's uh, to me. Yeah. Molly, mm -hmm. thank you very much for introduction. Well, you call me now. You gave me so many, so many warm words. I'm not sure if I'm so deserving, but I will try my best. Uh, let me see. I will share the screen. And uh, before I share the screen. Um, June from from June, uh, uh, we we, we like talking to him about uh, uh, visual data storing. And of course, when you when you do also the charts, you want to tell the story. And uh, the story uh, when we uh, analyze any any crypto assets would be would be uh, on many levels. One side you will always see okay what is macroeconomic situation in the general world, especially now after COVID time. And secondly, you will pay close attention how the cycles of uh, uh, Bitcoin dominance is evolving because alts are dominated very strongly. Uh, depends where you are. You need to understand this context. Now, this, this first two part I will uh, uh, leave aside because otherwise it will be not one chart, but uh, like many and it will take a long time. What we will focus only on small aspect, but I believe it's a very important aspect to understand uh, our uh, uh, behavior situation right now of this key stakeholders. Yeah. So now I will share the screen. Let it take, is it okay, visible? Yep, now we can see it. Yeah, so now what we see in the screen, uh, like uh, on sentiment, uh, we have uh, uh, dozens actually, when not hundreds of different uh, metrics. Uh, which explain what's going on, like ranging from financial, derivative, social, uh, developer activity, and of course, the biggest part is on chain. Now, as I say, more than 100. I pick up only four. I pick up only four of them to tell mm -hmm. the story. The story goes like this. It's the green line, it's the price of Aave, of Lint. Yeah, in both charts, it's uh, Aave price. Uh, and then the first one, in the first one, uh, you see two metrics uh, exchange and flow, how much of Aave is. Uh, our tokens are always flowing into exchanges. 
and the second dormant circulation. Now, what it means and why does it pick up it for the story? Uh, both of them tell very important uh, uh, aspect. Long-term holders, most of them whales because they bought old or long-term back holders uh, ranging all the way back from 2017. Yes, that's why I took dormant current circulation. 365 days. Those tokens who haven't been moved for a year, for a year. Uh, they, uh, this is uh, uh, this line, uh, brown line, they uh, show activities, specific kinds of activities. And these activities coincide with exchange inflow. So what they're doing, they're selling. Yeah, they're selling. And they've been selling uh, uh, at some point of time a lot. Here again, quite a lot. And they uh, they done selling. And they've been done selling uh, before this big rise happened. This pattern been seen by me personally dozens of times. It's always the same behavior. Big whales, they don't chase every single dollar. They don't chase 100 x They are fine with 5, 10 uh, x more than fine. So they will sell uh, uh, usually before the ultimate tops comes. So once you see this kind of activity, uh, dormant circulation will go to the uh, exchange flows. It will mean there will be correction for some time, but it will also mean, okay, it's time of the correction for you as a retail, as far as a retail. If you are not yet in token, maybe I have to accumulate because the next phase is a strong growth might happen. Yeah, you remember always this is the same story. It might happen, there is risk. But in case of Huawei, it did happen. In, in case of many other tokens, if you're not going here, it did happen. So now, after we know whales are mostly out of the game, they will not bump on the market much more. They don't have so much anymore. Uh, they will likely hold it until something happens. Yeah. So now it's a game of the crowd. Crowd participating in the uh, price definition. And this is the second chart. This chart is uh, uh, important right now. What we see on this chart, the same green line is the price, is the orange line is the daily active headers, is how many on daily basis uh, active uh, uh, holders of uh, um, our participating in activity. And another chart uh, is uh, uh, like a uh, yeah, smaller one. It's uh, uh, how many new addresses or new inflow of the fresh blood happening. Yeah? Fresh uh, uh, holders, future back holders or uh, happy holders, depends. Uh, as long as long the stories here goes, it's the crowd. They act differently from the whales. Whales also crowd, but they own specific one. Uh, there will be always with growing prices. There should be growing amount of uh, uh, participation. So so far till this point, everything was good. And uh, as you will see, uh, it has been increasing even before price starts again growing. So it's always or. Oh, very often, a uh, very nice buy signal, which we now see reflecting our has been uh, uh, pumping a lot, especially with good news coming with our economics. Uh, important uh, parameter now to look at to once you see divergency or deviation is growing price, growing supposedly activity of the crowd, it start declining. Uh, and you can see on delictive addresses, network addresses, uh, trading volumes, we are in a danger uh, territory. We will be in the danger territory sooner or later. And this time, when it corrects, it will correct much more than what we've seen before. And this is the story for today, uh, which combines uh, how we came to this position, uh, uh, that the whales are not playing so much uh, role anymore. Now it's a game of the crowd, many participants, and how to potentially understand what's happening. And this is story specific for our, because if you ask me to do uh, coverage for other uh, uh, token beat, iFi, uh, the newly born, it's a diff completely different story. Ethereum, completely different story. For uh, tokens maybe similar to our, it could be something similar like uh, REN or, uh, I don't know, uh, yeah, REN falls in a similar category or Kyber network will be similar. But for many others will be a different story. So please uh, don't uh, take it blindly and apply to everything else. Yeah, I think um, maybe that's it for like introductionary and uh, I've done 10 minutes, which is also a good sign. Uh, maybe we can come to more interactive. But, nice. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I, I do have a question. You mentioned uh, that you yeah. do expect a correction and of course, Avi's had a incredible uh, run-up throughout 2020. 
Um, and these charts, or maybe uh, some other indicators, um, as many of you may know, we, we also have on-chain intelligence and into block. I was just wondering which uh, indicators would you be looking for warning signs of like a potential correction starting? Potential correction starting? Uh, well, remember when I'm doing analysis, I'm doing behavior analysis. So I, I mm -hmm. assume uh, the best way uh, uh, to see uh, the top is coming when no one expecting it. And the best uh, uh, moment for correction to happen when no one is expecting it. And I will be looking at metrics proving it. It could be explosive growth in some social metrics, which we don't share here, or too positive okay. sentiment could be. Or it could be, as I mentioned here, if we're looking purely on chain, it's a kind of show it too, maybe not as good as social, but a kind of show it. Uh, uh, There's a lower ones, uh, uh, chat. Uh, if we see now price going to 40 cent and extreme spike in delicate fetishes, we might have it. If it's uh, uh, still level more or less similar to what we've seen before, it keep growing. It's not time for correction yet. But uh, I personally always uh, combine on-chain and social uh, because with one, it's like uh, it's like a broad with one uh, fly or with one link cannot fly or you will do many mistakes. And so uh, if when I'm making decisions, I will pay to both of them. But this is good enough uh, to give you sometimes very strong indication as it doesn't look healthy anymore. It will happen very soon. Yeah. Uh, divergency between uh, price activity and on-chain activity. Yeah. And of course, uh, but it happened here already. When, mm -hmm. uh, as, as in the first chart, when uh, people who are in the profit, yeah, because this whales were in a good profit. Uh, in another chart, I can sell it. It's like, see, it's like three times in the profit at least. So once they move uh, holders, you see on the metric, they're in the profit and they move to exchange. Uh, there is no other uh, <laughs> outcome price will correct. Sometimes dump, but it will correct for some time because there will be selling pressure. A few days depends how much the deposit depends on the order book depths uh, you can uh, assume it will take a few days or one week sometimes it takes a few weeks to absorb all the uh, dump from whales uh, but at least a few days uh, will be but it happened with it uh, uh, in case of our yeah mm -hmm. in case of ifi hasn't happened yet there will be a lot of interesting time uh, but here it happened i wouldn't consider it to be a big uh, danger yeah i have a question that one of yeah. the people watching sent user four four five zero five one five you can change your username by the way in the cmc <laughs> um, uh, user panel but he he or she asked does this mean that they need to grow the network quickly to just to sustain demand for the coin basically there's no more supply side that's a good left. that's a good question and this is the right, right one yeah to sustain price in crypto you need to keep growing your network because the moment you cannot do it anymore, it means attention of the crowd moves somewhere else to the next big thing. And the price will react, uh, latest in two days. Yeah, so this is a very good question, actually, which has already an answer. Yeah. Definitely helps if you keep growing your network in general. Yes, 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 <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Well, you can uh, sometimes, in we've seen attempt, you could uh, potentially uh, use some special <laughs> techniques. Some did it, but uh, not on the scale, not on the scale where our already and they will not do it anyway. There's, a, there's another question from the audience. I think this one can be directed more at Lucas, which, which is that uh, user 366-3977 asked, uh, Ava recently announced their tokenomics or Avanomics. What are the initial impressions, read their governance framework and safety module? Yeah, yeah so uh, the way they're handling it, is first there will be a migration from my understanding. So this is a very new topic. It got released uh, yesterday, but I did have some time to dive into it. And they will do some migration from the Lent token to the Ave token, which will be their governance token. And through the safety module, and this is different to um, compounds, um, come to the way they're handling their, liquid, their governance token. Uh, through the safety module, the users will be able to stand, to stake their Aave tokens. And through that, there's, it's essentially the uh, safety um, in case there's an attack. Uh, they call it a shortfall event. And the, the, reward, the people that supply the liquidity to the safety module get rewarded uh, with Lend tokens and also through BAL tokens. 
So it's where the liquidity mining takes place through balancers pool. And essentially they're rewarded for supplying liquidity and keeping the system uh, safe. It's, it's again different from compound, which uh, users are rewarded for supplying liquidity to the uh, lend pools, lending pools. Whereas this one is supplying liquidity to the staking pool and, and balancer. That's my understanding of it, at least. I don't know if, Maxime, you have a different way to look at it. Uh, honestly, I have not checked it yet. Yeah, and uh, But your explanation makes sense. And it's a kind of in the, in the spirit of what we've seen lately in the five space. So, yeah. yeah. Maybe, yeah, yeah. Unfortunately, this model, it's a bit complicated, but we have some proof of concept and it seems to be working in some cases, especially yeah. IFI, IFI economic house launched in one week. So that was a complicated one. Uh, I remember it took me one day just to understand to participate in this mining. And that was complicated. I said, oh gosh, but it worked amazingly. So sometimes complicated doesn't mean bad. And uh, what you explained, it's, it's not so complicated. It's okay, yeah. And, and thanks for explanation, it's a good summary. It's complicated to understand it. Uh, to mm -hmm. use it sometimes is not that complicated. And yeah, it, yeah. like the user experience has definitely gotten better in DeFi. So um, it's, they, they're definitely making it easy when there's like a bunch of complex stuff happening in the back end. <laughs> mm, yeah, 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 that's nice. So one of the same users with the really long numerical username asked also related to the DeFi trend, how, if at all, has the phenomenon of yield farming impacted the recent growth of Lend? Well, uh, once again, could, could you repeat? Oh, was it for Lucas' question anyway? Yeah. Um, I, sorry, how, you can jump in. Mm -hmm. No, no, yeah, no, no, so I just how, didn't hear. Okay, then Lucas can go first. And it's how the yield farming has impacted the price of land, right? Yeah, the growth of land. Yeah, so there's definitely anticipation for it. Um, the Avid team has been teasing the Avidnomics upgrade. Mm -hmm. And of course, there's been a speculation about yield farming. And well, they finally announced that there, there will be uh, yield farming in it. And there's the expectation for more liquidity to be supplied for Aave and held within the staking pool and balancer. Uh, something that's interesting, uh, I found interesting compared to other uh, yield mining uh, incentives is that they will have a cool down period. They don't 100% uh, specify the terms to that. I think it's up to the governance. Um, but it's essentially the, the rewards, the stake, the Aave will be uh, locked, the, the earned one, not, not the ones that you receive at first. Um, so it, it has less uh, price pressure, selling pressure. And I feel like in general, the opportunity to earn Aave through the, these liquidity incentives um, has definitely led to some hype as can be seen in the price chart. Yeah. Can be seen in the moment. Indeed. <laughs> I have another question um, from Ava Economist, which is a great username. And also I'll mm. shout out Nick from OS who updated his username for my convenience. So thank you for Nick for the other <laughs> questions. <laughs> but from Ava Economist, uh, he, she, they asked, if you wanted exposure to the DeFi trend, would you go for comp, lend, Ava, can see or something else, maybe link like we discussed last week? Well, this is a good one. Uh, well, I can tell what I'm doing, yeah, and then it's uh, it's not an investment advice, but yeah, uh, what I'm doing, I'm 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 farming uh, first to understand in direct user experience how it works, how it impacts me, because we are in sentiment also developing something in this direction. <laughs> so I want to see, okay, how does it feel where I, like feel stuck. Uh, but while doing it, I realized, oh, I actually not bad. It does provide you uh, some nice, uh, some nice rewards too. And the thing is, the thing is, mostly you balance between two things. Uh, it's like stable coins, which you keep into uh, in your hands, uh, and it's a kind of uh, uh, safe unless <laughs> there are some hacks, and, and it gives you some yield. And then the second part, which you mentioned, what do we choose? Uh, uh, Link, lend, uh, compound, IFI. And uh, they, it's, uh, uh, you, you need to choose uh, wisely, not only the token in terms of will it go up and down, but where you actually farm it. 
in some uh, uh, in some pools, uh, like uh, on Uniswap, it's 50-50. So the risk is big if your uh, token is crashing, not so pleasant. And other pools uh, participating in one of them on Balancer, it's 98 to 2 for IFI. And then the risk actually for IFI is quite limited. So, and the decisions uh, uh, vector you need to make, it's now uh, uh, more complicated than before. Uh, um, so it's not uh, not only about the price which will happen uh, to the tokens, it's only about where exactly you participate and uh, how much liquidity you provide in percentage because your reward depends on it. So unfortunately, I don't think there is any simple answer yet or I haven't seen any easy to understand uh, dashboard, even good ones like Zappa or Zero to some degree. They give you a good overview, uh, but it does not really help you to make a decisions. Uh, uh, I wish we could build it on sentiment, but like we are committed to so many things, so we don't uh, really build much in this direction. And uh, I believe at the moment where we are now, uh, it's like for the next months to come, it's uh, everyone has to build on his own or look for. There are some small pieces of tools, uh, and actually we can maybe list later at the end of the chat if you would. I can provide some links, which you use it. Some tools here, some tool here, and you look into uh, the numbers and you make your decisions. But it's difficult. It's difficult. <laughs> so uh, for sure, yeah, it's definitely an area we're looking at in into the block as well. And mm. I don't want to get into financial advice of choosing one token over the yeah. other. It's definitely um, fun and better to get an idea of a token using their protocol. So I have Yield Farm myself as well, just to get a better feel for uh, these protocols. And I would consider the one thing I would uh, recommend is consider the incentives uh, powering these systems. So with the Avenomics upgrade, they do show positive uh, alignment of incentives between stakeholder uh, with the growth of the protocol. So that's a positive sign. Uh, would I recommend buying it? And I, I don't want to recommend buying it or selling it to truth be told, but there's definitely um, the good incentive mechanism behind it um, as well as some other projects like synthetics and Kyber with a recent catalyst upgrade. Mm. And well, yeah, um, that's right, actually yeah, no. Nick from Australia asked why um, we didn't mention the synthetic and the Pi Dow larger small cap basket. I hadn't heard of the second one. Well, I think you pick up one token for one talk. That's why we're focusing on our <laughs> today. And next week. Uh, next, yeah, next yeah. week there'll be more. Um, I have another well, question. Well, uh, I can ask, actually, I can ask you to. I can answer to this question because okay. as I said, as I said, the story, the story, when you use the data and you make a story which explains uh, what happened till now and what to pay attention in the future, it will be different from different tokens, especially for synthetics, because uh, they're kind of in the same space, staking, earning, farming, uh, like many, but they have some very specific use uh, cases of parts in their system or the way the tokens is used, it's locked and, uh, it's not on-chain activity, it's just speculative activities. I would, I personally, if you ask me about synthetics, I would have to make a different story. I would pick up different charts. That's why it's uh, actually, you cannot cover all of them or many of them in, in, at once. Um, another question from Ab Economist. Thank you for all the great questions, by the way, from everyone who asks both of you guys, do you think that Ethereum 2 will have an impact on DeFi rewards? For example, we can get staking rewards from Ether directly in the future. Good question. Um, I, I don't know the answer. Uh, I feel like people definitely, um, if, if that's an option, um, like to stake your ETH and simultaneously uh, earn uh, liquidity mining rewards on top of it from, for supplying uh, to a liquidity pool, so for instance, the Avenomics pool is 80% of it, 20% ETH. Maybe uh, you will be able to, and it's likely I would say, um, that you would be able to also earn staking rewards for the Ether provided there. I don't know if, uh, what do you think, Maxime? Uh, yeah, I think you, you, you're right. Especially with now different kind of pools you can have, 80, 20, 95, anything is possible now. Uh, there is no doubt people will go massively in Ethereum staking. 
and going to massively Ethereum staking uh, means uh, two to three months before or even four months before when market realized it will happen, we will see uh, some changes in Ethereum price. It will start pricing in because right now it's still wild uh, speculation. It's not really known will it happen in January or <laughs> he knows the names which is going about zero to zero. Uh, so what exactly happened? No really knows. So market can pump from time to time, but it's not pricing in the reality. And we will see uh, uh, likely a rapid price appreciation of Ethereum a uh, few months before it. And as it's already happening now, uh, staken uh, is being hot battled used in so many protocols, uh, much more people will be more familiar, much more infrastructure or UI interface, everything will be developed. So it uh, uh, means that uh, likely a lot of it will be locked for staking. And uh, it has, of course, a good sign. Uh, lock when or as you locked it means less circulation and uh, uh, more price uh, growing. But it has kind of some mm, uh, uh, could have some side effects uh, by the rumors of the fact. So uh, what I want to say is that uh, uh, the moment it's official, or more or less, we will get in three to four months taken. It will be maybe one of the most exciting time in crypto in the last years. Yeah, we'll have a lot of uh, yeah. responsive activity from traders, investors, repositioning themselves. Yeah. Now it's still very, very, well, even though we've seen in the Bitcoin Ethereum lately, it's so nice moments, but it will be nothing compared to what we will see, <laughs> I believe. Yeah. Um, there's another question, again, from Ava Economist, who asks, we saw Comp lose a lot of its value already. Are these DeFi pumps sustainable? It's a very timely question. I, yeah, it, it yeah. is. And very I'll go back a bit to my comparison between the uh, Comp liquidity farming mechanism to the one, uh, well, liquidity mining, mixed yield. Mm -hmm. uh, the one Ave will be implementing. Uh, my understanding, and it also goes to the supply that's uh, available, circulating supply. Compound that uh, most of the supply is still uh, not circulating and it's getting emitted, rewarded to users um, every day. Uh, whereas the Aave uh, supply, uh, when they do the 100 to 1 migration, uh, most of it will be already circulating. Uh, so, in, in that sense, there will be less selling pressure, but also there will be a cool down period on the earned staked Aave. Um, I imagine they'll release more information about how specifically that cooldown period will work. But in my mind, it will be a bit like a lockdown period compared to traditional IPOs, where the, uh, these tokens wouldn't be able, you wouldn't be able to sell them for a while. They will be locked. Um, I would definitely look to, uh, for more details uh, when they do announce that. Mm -hmm. It's good. Uh, nice Just coming in with another question from Nick from Australia. I really do feel like this is a five person chat. It's us three, Nick from Australia and Ava Economist. <laughs> Fantastic. Um, yeah. So Nick asks, we would love to know um, what Stantiment thinks of the alleged DeFi bubble, which you kind of just answered. And then uh, some people refer to the huge market caps of Bitcoin Cash and XRP as illustrations that even with limited use, these projects can capture huge value. Mm -hmm. What was the first part of the question? What sentiment is thinking about? I didn't, the uh, alleged DeFi bubble. If it's legit or not, or yeah. if it's a bubble or not, yeah? Mm -hmm. Ah, yeah, that's, a good, that's a good question. I'm, in our community also, we ask this question irregularly. Um, You know, Vitalik said about it, that uh, DeFi uh, rates are not sustainable, it will go down to zero. And I think he's a reasonable or like honest person says uh, what he believes and it's a kind of true. Uh, it's not sustainable long term. But uh, uh, the one thing I learned from uh, uh, 16, 17, 18 and 19, the rationality of crypto market is much stronger than the uh, uh, ever um, expect. So we might stay in the mode which believed to be uh, overhyped or irrational. Uh, wait, I think something we do. Uh, uh, for longer than uh, we think uh, like 
it doesn't make from rational point of, uh, of view any sense, it still is here. So this is my answer. Uh, if, and if I try to answer, I will have to use rational arguments for or against them. And again, it will be against the nature of the beast we're dealing with. It's not rational. Yeah. And this is the main reason <laughs> I found it. I started the project back in the 16th sentiment because it became it becomes clear to you in crypto. There is not much rational things going on around. Yeah, there is many projects, uh, no volition, it's not because uh, good or bad reasons. It's just uh, expectations, hopes, Dogecoin. Yeah? We all love it. What is the value there? Yeah? Just because we all love it. And they do cool stuff. And uh, uh, this is uh, uh, just one example. And uh, in DeFi space, uh, uh, it's uh, uh, even stronger. The money you're earning is real and it's very fast. So you become irrational very fast. So maybe we shouldn't use uh, too much rationality to just uh, see when it gets to extreme. And it's not extreme yet. At extreme, we will see Bitcoin uh, to zero. Uh, this is an extreme. <laughs> as long as we don't get it, well, maybe not extreme yet. Um, we should get our bit Bitcoin to zero, or Bitcoin to uh, zero. Yeah. <laughs> so no, it will get. Yeah. I have a slightly want... different point of view. I, oh, yeah. I don't know if you have, want to go into another question. I was just going to say uh, it depends also on the time frame uh, you look at it. Um, with DeFi, of course, they have a have had a run up uh, this year, um, but in the long term, I'm I personally I think they they're doing. Um, very useful innovation. Um, so I think um, in the long term, we might see these evaluations uh, go up. I wouldn't say by now or later. And I would agree with what you're saying, Maxime, that uh, data is critical here and to understand how, what's if it's being rational, the market or not, or if it's actually being used. Um, and, I, and I think that's a, how you can, any investor can get a better idea of uh, whether these um, protocols are creating actual value or they're just being speculated upon. Mm -hmm. yeah. One, one another, uh, like uh, maybe last thought on it. Uh, I remember how it was in 17, the very rational voices uh, half a year before or sometime before market picked, uh, there were a lot of argument. Ethereum has problems, Bitcoin has problems. Yeah, At the top, no one was arguing anymore. So there are no concerns, there are no worries, everyone is excited. Top feels different. Or <laughs> the end uh, part. And in the fight, to some degree, we can say it's hype or even overhyped with all the latest innovation. Uh, we have not addressed yet uh, as the approach of uh, uh, doing so many innovations in a very complicated and complex way. Yeah, We had hacks not longer than three months ago and money was lost. Now everyone forget about it. So what happened if we suddenly lose 100 millions in one of protocols? Oh, yeah. That will change the mood very fast. Mm -hmm. And it can happen. Like There is no guarantee it will happen. It's, uh, it's definitely a risk fast. to consider. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so to some degree, we don't discuss this thing, uh, like risk involved in uh, all farming and yielding. So I feel a little bit insecure. I think, okay, uh, maybe it will happen someday soon. <laughs> uh, but uh, at the same time, there are a lot of people who are raising concerns. Or oh, are we in the bubble? Are we in the hype? And when I see so many people mention it, most it means, well, maybe we are not yet. And the bubble, real bubble hype you don't talk about. So yeah, I have uh, one more audience question, and then I wanted to ask if Lucas had any into the block mm -hmm. data he wanted to share. So the last question just came in. It's, do you guys know when they will make the announcement about the cool down period for the new ABBA? No, um, my understanding is they will uh, figure out a lot of the details through the governance um, portal, which they launched. Um, no specific dates, though, to my knowledge. Mm -hmm. All right. And then if you have any data from Into the Block you want to share? Yeah, definitely. So as many of you watching, um, you know, uh, I assume you're watching my screen now, correct? Yeah, um, yeah into the block, uh, we've partnered with CoinMarketCap for about six months now. So for Aave, uh, we move from the charts to on-chain analysis, and we supply this quick view um, overview of the token. And one, one thing that I have been looking at uh, that Maxime uh, kind of alluded to is the, the crowd is definitely the ones uh, leading the recent price action. 
and I can uh, I can tell this with the drop in large transactions, uh, which has dropped significantly. Large transactions we define as transactions over a hundred thousand uh, in value, and as we can see here, uh, it jumped significantly uh, in June earlier to the rally, um, and then in in late July, uh, right as it was peaking, it, it also increased possible selling action. And recently with the Avenomics release, even though uh, there's, there was a high price action, like 20% and another 20% yesterday, there was uh, little uh, large transaction volume, which just lends me to believe and to confirm what Maxim was saying about the crowd leading the way uh, with the recent price action. All right, well, that's about time. We've had a lovely conversation with Nick from Australia and Evan Economist, Ava not, what was the username? Ava Economist. So I wanted to thank both of you guys so much for being in our second ever Cha Cha Chats. And I hope that you'll come back for more in the future to discuss other DeFi protocols or maybe some crazy on-chain event will happen and we'll need to get you guys on quick to explain it to all of us. Definitely. Yeah, it was a great pleasure. It was nice, nice, uh, like a family talk. <laughs> but nice, thanks for organizing it. Thanks for having me, Molly, and nice to meet you, Maxim. Yeah, nice yeah, to meet you. Thanks, uh, Molly, for organizing. Yeah. Thanks for inviting. Of course, everyone have a nice day and enjoy, enjoy your tea.